In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a storm in Fortnite Critter. I'm going to go over many things, like how to make multiple phases, and also how to make airdrop spawns. So let's get right to it. So you want to use um, the advanced storm controller and the advanced storm beacon, or controller beacon, I mean. But So the advanced storm controller is kind of like the brain. Like this kind of controls uh, everything at the start, and then this is just kind of like it plays into this, if that makes sense. So it's like that, they're, they're, without them, they're nothing, you know what I mean? I'm gonna show you this works right now. So we're just gonna go through all the settings in the advanced storm controller. Generate storm on game start. Pretty self-explanatory. This is generate the storm on game start. We usually want it to. Phase one radius is just the radius of phase one. If you didn't know, there is many phases to a storm and you can have um oh i think it's up to 50 i think let me just check phase yeah it's up to 50. you can have up to 50 phases if you wanted to all right so this phase one radius this is where the storm will begin okay so right now it's up these yellow lines and basically um it's a bit small so we'll just increase it up a little bit so so we put one around 600 maybe that's a good number. So it doesn't fit the island completely, but you just change it to what you want. I'm just gonna use that for now. After this, we're just gonna skip with this and go to Brown's radius. So I'm gonna explain this very quickly. Uh, this is the other yellow line, and basically what this yellow line is, is this is the maximum the storms can go to, if that makes sense. So right now, it'll obviously not work because we're kind of outside the bounds. So we just gotta increase that maybe to like 600 So it's just like right over the max. So it'll fit in. Why is this important? Well, if you look in your beacons, there's if you can you can set them move randomly which uh sometimes if it's moving randomly it can randomly there's very low probability of this happening but it can randomly move and uh, like off into the ocean so if you have a bounce ready so make sure that it doesn't go past uh you know the the, the the red right here okay now um use custom phases uh we're going to be using custom phases if we're making a better way out this will be fine you could you could just play with this if you wanted to but we're not going to because we're going to make it cooler delay time so this is how long it takes before phase one begins so the storm will be like chill in here and but depending on how long you have this timer on the storm will just chill here and then i'll move after like 600 seconds just a bit too long that's like by 10 minutes so like 10 seconds or something like that doesn't really matter so it'll just move in whenever it's ready why oh, no i did the wrong option so they mean so I'll move in whenever it's uh it's ready i know on finish behavior uh you can make it stay or destroy you really just want to keep it stay so let it finish going in it'll stay usually it's going to not go in that far so it's fine and what we can do is uh storm sickness something is the last thing um this is like if you ever play Battle Royale. This is if you chill the storm for too long, you get you get like a sickness, so you will get more damage if you if you're in the storm for too long. So you can turn that on if you want. If you turn it off, uh, you know it's up it's up to the person. So that's pretty much it for um, the event storm controller. You you can use a uh, storm generate storm destroy storm events. You can also detect when a phase ends, which is really useful if you want to have like a HUD message that's like a storm is closing or whatever. You want to have a random event spawn after like you can have a trigger that triggers only after eight times. So after on the eighth phase, like a, like a, a, an airdrop falls down. But for now, I'm just gonna show you the basics of making. A storm so okay so this is a cool setting you all got out here now um what we do with this thing so basically we can make a bunch of different phases now it's very important right that the first phase just put put the beacon right on top of it so uh they're like they're like brothers you know <laughs> so so this is right on top of it phase one storm radius you want to you want to do the exact same settings as this so phase one radius is 600 so we want to make it so it's 600 so this resize time is how long it will take to get to this size. So I don't know, maybe like a second, because we don't really want to be the last that long. Damage level, uh, since it's only the one of the earlier ones, we just want to have like one percent, so it doesn't do a lot of damage to you. And movement behavior is pretty useful because um, what this means is if you have it on move randomly, this will basically make it so it moves anywhere. And move the beacon is where you can control the storm because where the beacon is, that's where the storm will like you know try to pinpoint if that makes sense wait time is just so after the storm is already done moving this is how long the storm will take to get to the next phase if that makes sense so maybe you have like a break of 30 seconds and then the storm moves again or something i'm gonna make it five seconds just because it'll be quicker when i'm actually showing that move distance minimum so this is it when you have randomly selected on so if you have it move randomly on it this is like determines how far the storm will move randomly if that makes sense so if like let's say where the storm beacon is and i have move randomly on what i can do is 
I have this three 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 hundred and two eighty. Uh, it's gonna move three hundred and two eighties in like a radius. It's gonna pick a random area and like a circle around the beacon. So it might move there, or it might move there, or it might move there. That makes sense. But I'm going to make it so it moves the beacon. <laughs> it's easier. Now what we can do then? So if we move this beacon, we now have our our first phase. We want a second phase now. So we'll make a second phase. So we want to change the phase to two, obviously. So now this is a phase two beacon. Now what does this do now? So whenever this phase one controller beacon is done. And we're on the phase two and well we'll do some phase two stuff so maybe the storm radius is slightly smaller around here so like here maybe we have the storm beacon up on this like little mountain here and then what we can do is the storm once it's done it'll move over to this place if that makes sense and it's in the radius of this and then wait time i don't know five seconds again uh resize time will take five seconds it's time to move over so it'll be quite fast so let's put it right there. Damage level will be two. Even behavior beacon. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's phase two. We just might maybe put another one over here. Call that phase three. Storm radius. Maybe that's maybe a bit smaller. Does it really matter? Damage level will be higher, like 10%. And then over here will be like phase four, 10%, and 20%. You know what I mean? You, you, you make it um make it to your own divine will. This is this is infinitely repeatable. So you can just do it infinitely if you wanted to. So you can have one set of phase, two phase, three phase, all the way up to 50. I'm not making 50 phases, but you can do it like you let like you want. Whatever. Whatever. However you like. Let's see this in game. Let's put my strings in five seconds. Boom. Storm arm is moving. <laughs> As you can see, it's a bit too fast. Okay, now we're in phase we're phase phase one. It's gonna go over here, I think. And now we're in phase two. We're in phase two of the storm. Okay, 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 okay. And now we now we move over this way. Okay, so you kinda see how this works, right? And now um since this is the last phase, um I think we die now. Yeah. Okay, well obviously that was a bit too fast, but um it worked, it worked, right? It worked. <laughs> now okay, so what we might do next is to just show this is what I'm gonna do the last thing I do. So final little thing we're gonna do is we're going to detect when a storm, you know, is phased. So I'll have a hello hug message. Let's say like uh storm new phase or something. Then it will show that when the advanced storm controller is ended. And all we can do is have a trigger, grab one of these. What we can do is time to trigger, we'll put that on to maybe three. Then we'll trigger transmit every trigger. So every three triggers it gets, it will transmit. So we'll have uh advanced storm control beacon. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, advanced storm controller, unphase ended. Once that trigger gets triggered, which is three times. If you grab this, it's called a supply drop spawner. What we can do with this is that we can spawn in a balloon. So usually you want it above, because that's where they're going to land. Or you can make it custom. Make it make it like, you know, uh, we're going to have spawn lay off. Because we're going to be spawning it when the storm reaches phase three. Item list. We'll put them, I don't know. But whatever items you want, like a weapon. Alien and I sure go ahead. <laughs> you do all this if you want. Um, we want to su spawn the supply drop when uh, the trigger is triggered. And then where's phase three? It was over here, right? So let's put it there and then we'll come down when phase three is, you know, phase three. So now let's let's try this out. You see, now we have a whole message that says new phase when the storm stops. Once the storm goes again, and once it reaches where it needs to go in 47 seconds, as it seems up right, uh, we should get another message. Ah, uh, isn't this so much better? Oh my god. Okay, so now, new phase once again. Once it takes down, it'll continue going. And then I'll go to phase 3 in 60 seconds. Also, I'm not sure what's happening with the map. If you look at the map, you can't really see the zones. I think that's just a UEFM thing. I don't, I don't know why. Surely it'll get fixed soon. Surely. And if you make the other radius smaller, it'll shrink down to the, the radius that's desired for the beacon. So if you add a radius 100 and a radius 10, it'll shrink down to radius 10. Okay, so, and also look at that. It triggered three times, and we now got our supply drop in this spawn. So, you'll be able to, like, shoot it down and everything. But, um, yeah, so, this showed it all work. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is the end of the video. Remember to like and subscribe. And also, just a reminder, I'm making a new tutorial series and focus on more mini tutorials. So, if you have any suggestions for what I should make, leave them in the comments below. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, so yeah, in the openings. What's inside? Let's find out!